Hi, I'm Isabella Fagiani, the associate pastor here at Raleigh Court Presbyterian Church. This past Sunday, we celebrated World Communion Sunday, and on Sundays such as this, sometimes we have art in our worship space to help illumine God to us and help draw us into our time of worship. This Sunday, since it was World Communion Sunday, we had two different globes on the chancel, including the one behind me today, and this bread display of breads from around the world. As Pastor Andrew said a few weeks ago, that while stained glass windows can create space for holy mind wandering, I found myself on Sunday having holy mind wandering coming from a captivating chancel. As I reflected and celebrated our connection with Christians around the world this past Sunday, I thought of the new members that we will be receiving this upcoming Sunday here. In an often used invitation to the table, we remind ourselves that this table doesn't belong to any one church or person, but that the table of communion belongs to Christ. And therefore, this table knows no bounds as people from all over come to this feast. Our church is full of different people who in their own ways have found Raleigh Core Presbyterian Church and call this place home. We have people who grew up in this church, were baptized, were married, and now their children have been baptized here. We have folks who wandered in in during a snowstorm. There are graduates from tech who fell in love with this area. People who left Roanoke or RCPC for a while and came back. People who grew up in different denominations. People who grew up unsure if church was really the place for them, and yet all of these people and their stories have found this church to be home. While on World Communion Sunday, we celebrate our connections as siblings in Christ around the world, we also celebrate the differences in our stories and experiences that have led us to come together and serve Christ. And as new members join this Sunday, we celebrate their stories and experiences that have led them to be here now and in this community of believers. Paul writes to the Galatian church community as they incorporate Gentiles into their fold. While Paul has written in letters such as Romans that God's salvation is not just for the Jews, but for the Gentiles, that God's salvation message is for everyone, Paul writes in, particularly, in particular to the Galatian church community as they work to incorporate Gentiles in. The Galatians have this question, do the Gentiles need to prescribe to the same identity marker as the Jews through circumcision? And Paul's answer is no. Even our different identity markers don't exclude us from salvation. Rather, in Jesus Christ, the divisions that come from these identity markers and categories no longer exist. Hear these words from Paul in the letter to the Galatians chapter 3, verses 26 to 28. For in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. As many of you were baptized into Christ, have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek, there is no longer slave or free, there is no longer male or female, for all of you are in Christ Jesus. The divisions from these markers no longer exist in Christ. While they are still our identities, they are no longer reasons to divide ourselves. Paul stresses that the division does not matter, for all is an heir of God and valued equally as a body of Christ. This value is automatic. The Gentiles don't have to become like the Jews. They can remain uncircumcised, remain a Gentile, and be seen as an equal member of this group. For God's salvation is for the Gentiles just as they are. And so for us today, God's salvation is already for us. And as we step into our relationship and commitment in this local body of Christ, we experience that salvation all the more fully. As we worship God together, and as we journey faithfully through life, through the big moments and the small moments in community, we tether ourselves to one another, bringing our full so stories and our full selves, knowing that there is grace upon grace in this place. And we commit ourselves to one another, similarly to how Ruth commits herself to Naomi. After Naomi decides to return home alone, now a widower and a grieving mother, Ruth says to Naomi, wherever you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. There will I be buried. May the Lord do thus and so to me and more as well. 
We say yes to this commitment to one another, unsure of what lies ahead. But we say yes to the big and small acts of faithfulness in which we act as Ruths to those in the Naomi season and say, we're coming with you. We'll say yes to this community and perhaps soon begin serving this community in a variety of ways when we only know a few people. Perhaps we'll say yes to this community and soon participate in a meal train for new parents. And one day we'll allow ourselves to be recipients of this care for ourselves. We will act as Ruths when we can, trusting that should we find ourselves in a season of knowing Naomi's bitterness, our church will be there with people who will be our Ruths walking alongside of us. The late author Rachel Held Evans writes of life in church community as this. Like it or not, you cannot be a Christian on your own. Following Jesus is a group activity, and from the beginning it's been a messy one. It's been an incarnated one. So to those about to become new members, welcome. We're glad you're here. May all of us at Raleigh Court Presbyterian Church grow from your stories and experiences. And may we all live into God's story of salvation together in this place. Amen. Amen.